Hello, I'm Chris Menard. Today in Microsoft Excel, I'm going to do a really cool feature using Excel's subtotals, which are on the Data tab. And when I use the subtotals, I'm going to automatically put a page break in between groups. This is a really cool feature. So I've got Excel running. This file will be available for you to download also in my YouTube description. We have in column F, advertising sources. So I'm first going to sort by advertising sources. I'm just going to do a right click and do a sort A to Z. I don't have any blank rows. I don't have any blank columns. So one manager is in charge of Facebook. One manager is in charge of Google Ads. Somebody else handles LinkedIn in this example. I need each manager to get a printout of just what they're responsible for. So I don't want to manually try to do this. I'm going to use subtotals. So the data tab at the top over to the far right is the outline group. I'm going to select subtotal. When this screen appears at each change in, this is a real simple rule. Whatever you just sorted by a second ago has to be this top box. And I sorted by advertising source, so this must be advertising source. Use function. It's up to you what function you want to use. I can use sum, average count. I'm going to sum though. By default, whenever you do subtotals, subtotals will always check, because these are all my fields where it says add subtotal to. This is my header row going across. These are my fields. It'll always check the last field. So I'm just going to uncheck that one. I said I was going to sum, so I want to sum something numeric. I'm going to sum up the purchases to date, and I'm going to sum up the income. But if you notice, those are numeric fields. But here's that trick I told you about, because this is the default screen for subtotals. I'm going to put a page break between the groups. So Facebook will get an automatic page break. LinkedIn will get a page break. Google Ads, everything, everyone gets a page break. Watch this. Look at the line between row 11 and row 12. That is a page break line. It's also between row 24 and row 25. One more bonus item here. This did exactly what I wanted, so I could print, and I should get one, two, three, four, five pages. File, print, page one of five in the bottom. Here's the issue though. When I go, there's my header row on page one. When I go to the next page, I don't have the header row for every page from here. So to fix that, I'm going to go back. So we're leaving the data tab and we're going to go to page layout. And that is going to be called print titles. And notice it's in the page setup group, print titles. I'm already on the sheet tab, which is correct. Rows to repeat at top. I'm going to click in that box. And I'm going to go and select my header row, which is row number one right here. It puts in dollar sign one colon dollar sign one. That's perfect. You can go to print preview from here to see if it works. Trust me, it will. Page one, header row. Page two, the header row, three, four, five. So there is your Excel video for today. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I appreciate your time. Thank you.